Okay, hi everyone, I'm going to do a video, since so many requests have come in. I've not done a video for ages, so I'll do one of a cut. Well, the new soap I made yesterday, which is called Sea Witch, and it's inspired by the sea. I just took a break down in Cornwall a couple of weeks ago, and um, got a bit of inspiration for um, the Halloween stock. I've done all the um, autumn stuff, which will go live within the next week or so. But um, I've been working on Halloween because I just want to get it done. And the soaps, obviously, are the most important because they have to cure. So this one is a new one. I'm doing a whole bunch of new stuff for Halloween because I don't want to do the same as last year. It, didn't, it was all right, but um, I think it's just I've got a bit bored of the scents and they don't sell as quickly as they used to. So I thought, let's just change things up a bit. So I am. I've got some new names and new ideas and new, completely new scents. So, let's look what we got here. This one is a blend of several essential oils and a couple of fragrances as well to get this sort of kelpy scent. So it smells like the sea. Really nice. And this one I've put in some... Oh, that is nice. It's really minerally and fresh kind of earthy at the same time. I've put in some Irish moss, some Dead Sea mud and some Dead Sea salt. Um, what else? What else? Mango butter, a bit of seaweed. So yeah, that's about it. And I'm cutting them differently. I'm going to go for oh, more of a chunky look than I normally do. I've done that before with some so it's a bit like the test soaps come out, but they'll be chunkier and thicker. And um, I've been meaning to do that for ages because I like the way it looks better than um, my regular bars. So I'll just chop this up and then I use my old cutter to cut them with my blade. So I get them all the same size without using the tank. So this should be quite interesting inside. I did a bit of a kind of a drizzly drop swirl type thing. There we go. So it's kind of witchy and sea-like. And they're, yeah, they're this wide, so I've cut, like, I'm cutting the bars thinner, but then they're going to be chunkier. And they come out really, really nice. I'll show you some I've already done in a second. And it makes this a lot easier to um, cut as well. Look. get more logs out of it. It'd be nice to sell them as actual logs, to be honest, but um, not that many people want that many bars. I was going to start doing, like, custom soap bars, but um, I decided against it in the end. So I get five blocks, like this. It's a bit, it's weeping a bit because of the dead sea salt in there. I didn't put too much in, but I only put it in the part where I put the Dead Sea mud which is this brownish sort of colour and then the blackish charcoal and then the base I used a tiny tiny bit of blue ultramarine so that one's a bit thinner on the end so I just cut the chunks differently Whew. so damn hot lately in this room I've had a fan going but it's Saturday so I've taken the fan home So I'll use my old block cutter here, and uh, by hand, which can take a while, but um, it's nice to go back and use it actually. So I'll just drop the end off and I'll show you how I'm doing them. And I'm stamping them as well with my new stamp with the boot on. So there you go, they come out like this, like a nice decent sized chunk that fits in the hand nicely and they just look more rustic I think. Show you another one. This is one I made the other day. This is um, called Tomb or Tombstone. I'm not sure whether to call it Tomb or Tombstone. So this has got uh, pumice in the base 
and some rattle clay in the top and these are already stamped so they've got like this really nice chunky feel to them. They're still about four and a half to five ounce bars. I just like them. I like them. I'm not saying I'll change, you know, and do this all the time, but I, for the time being I really, really like the way they look. I just think they come out really nice. You get more of the design in each piece as well, rather than cutting an inch thick. These are like about an inch and a half. This cutter allows me to cut at four inch increments or six inch, so I'm going in between and we're coming out about five, so it's just a really nice chunk. I'm good. I just love the way they look, I think they're really cool. I've been looking on Pinterest, I've been pinning like lots of um, pictures of like old soaps from Marseille, you know, the old um, olive oil soaps, because I love the way they look. I wanted my soaps to look a bit like that, so that's why I've done this. Like, you know, when they stamp Savon de Marseille and stuff like that on the tops of them, I really, really like that, so I wanted them to be a bit like that. It's a bit more of a pain with the cut, but not that bad. It just takes a bit longer, but um, worth it to get these nice chunks. I think everybody likes that sort of thing, you know, they like the sort of monster chunks of soap. I think it's really nice. And you can still cut them if you want to, to get like, you know, a half chunk to use in the shower so you don't use the whole thing all at once, but I don't ever really do that. I just cut them, um, I just use them as they are. I like to have a big chunky soap in the bath. So I've got this one, I'm going to do a few more. I don't know what else to do yet. I've got a few names in mind and a few colour and design ideas, but the scents that go with them, I've not completely decided on yet. I know the next one's going to have quite a bit of blood orange. Um, and I've got some new oils. I've got some really nice ginger grass. And some more five-fold orange, a ton of that, because I use so much of it. Um, but blood orange actually is just as strong to me as the fivefold orange, if not stronger. It's got a very, very strong zesty scent, so I'm going to use a lot of that in the next one. And maybe I've got some nice sandalwood as well. I'll use the sandalwood in the um, one I just showed you a second ago, that tombstone one. I've got sandalwood in there. Not my sort of sandalwood, it's just the amorous, but it's a really nice earthy sort of scent and I've mixed that one with some frankincense and some other bits and pieces. So yeah, I'm on a mission. <laughs> Show you a few more. I think out of this I got about 36 bars. This is the smaller batch. I don't, I'm not using my um, extra large moulds at the moment. It not takes up some oil. Not that that matters, but you know, I end up getting through boxes and boxes of coconut oil, and then I end up having to put a lot of them on sale at the end of the season. So sometimes, which is great, you know, you still make enough dollar off of the batches, but it's nice to get rid of stuff quicker so that I've got more room on the shelves each time the new release comes along, so it's nice, so it looks witchy. I'm really pleased with the colour. I was going to use some lapis and then I decided not to. I used some ultramarine just to get that pale blue. I didn't put anything in the base at all other than just a tiny, tiny smidge of ultramarine. It's just come out the perfect colour, I think. So, going off to Cheltenham in a second with my sister. I'm going to go and do a bit of shopping. I've got to get myself a new cleanser and I use, um, I don't use my own stuff, funnily enough. I use Liz Earl for my cleanser because I, I mean I've tried to make some stuff for my face to mimic the Liz Earl stuff but nothing comes close and it's the best for my skin so I really really like it and I keep going back to it and when something's that good, you just it's worth just sticking to it, and it's not too expensive. It's like eleven quid for the cleanser, and I think the same for the toner, which is a lovely, lovely scent. 
lots of nice essential oils in. I used to use a Veda until I found out how much crap goes into a Veda and that the spiel is just a load of uh, bullshit really. Amazing, they put the power of plants on their packaging and then I think I've had one product where the only plant extract was sunflower oil. <laughs> I thought, hmm, there's some clever marketing for you, it's not even true. There was no essential oils listed in it at all, it was just unbelievable. I thought, well, there was me thinking they were all this all natural company and they're just not at all. So I hit them on the head and decided not to use them anymore. And I just think that's awful, don't you? But then when you get to know ingredients, you get to realise all the companies that lie to uh, make you believe things that aren't... I mean, I don't really get that. I don't get why companies do that, to try and make you believe that something's all natural when it's not. It's just a bit... Why would you bother? You know, lots of us like things that aren't all natural. Here I go again. I'm always having a rant about something, but that really bothered me because so many people think that they're so great and they're not at all. I used to have my hair done with a Vader hair dye until it completely knackered my scalp because they're just full of really bad ingredients, you know. Anyway, best shut up. Okay, so these little ones are um, slightly thinner, as you can see there, but then they're slightly fatter. So the last piece, I just cut them chunkier. So that's that. And then I will get my little trimmer. And show you how I finish all of these. Just get a good one. I just finished the taking off the edges just to refine them a little bit like that. Every sort of side bit, you know? Look at that. Just makes them look neater. Although I don't mind the full on rustic look, but this just helps when you start to first use the bar. It doesn't hurt <laughs> the skin if you've got sort of the chamfered edge. So there we go, that's what they look like. And then I will stamp one so you can see that as well. This is my stamp, this is my old one up here. I only got it done just before I changed the logo, so that was the one with the tree. But um, this text used to all like get gunked up and stuff, so that didn't work that well. So now I've just got my boot with the FP. So we'll do it this side, I'll show you what that looks like and then you can see how these will be finished and what they'll go on sale and look like. There you go. There'd be my new soup. So this is Sea Witch and um, these will be available for Halloween. I'm not sure when they'll go live. But uh, yeah, not too long. I think the autumn stock will go live Yeah, within a week or so and then I will... Uh, get all that out of the way and then yeah finish it off and start on Halloween so there we go I will see you for the next one bye